Cherries. Sure. No, we do. I'm writing that in there. This is the Slow Spout, an underdwarf ale that is thick and bitter. I'm brewing Dungeons and Dragons inspired beers and trying to create my own rendition of what I think these could be. With the Slow Spout, given that it's a thick and bitter drink, I thought the best example of a bitter drink might be something more like a sour drink, especially in regards to swirling around in one's insides as stipulated by the description. As for thick, or maybe a nice thick sour is going to be just what we want. Something with a huge huge amount of fruit and body. But how are we going to create the sour? And how are we going to get this thick, nice mouthfeel that we want to fit the description? So let's quickly go over the recipe for this. For my base, I'm just going to go with about 45% of Pilsner malt, as that makes a nice sort of foundation for this sour beer to rest on. But to create this thick mouthfeel, we're going to need to add some weird adjuncts to this. We're going to add about 17% of wheat malt and 14% of malted oats. Now this should provide with one, the thickness and the body, but also the malted oats should hopefully create some nice gummy texture to help again with more of that mouthfeel. We're also going to go with about 7% of carapils for, well, you guessed the mouthfeel, but also a bit of head retention also. And finally, I'm going to add about 300 grams of acidulated malt to help bring the pH down to help up with that, some of that sugar extraction. I'm also going to be adding 300 grams of dextrose into the boil, and this should help the yeast produce more lactic acid as it ferments. Normally, to further up the mouthfeel, brewers would traditionally use something like lactose as it's a completely unfermentable sugar. Being in lactose intolerant and also wanting to give this to vegan friends, I'm going to opt to try and use some maltodextrin instead, as it contains a high amount of dextrins which are long chain unfermentable sugars. So hopefully this should do the exact same thing. So I'm going to add in about 500 grams of maltodextrin. For hops, I don't want anything too bitter as I want my fruit to be the primary taste for this slow spell. So I'm just going to go in with about 10 grams of Halital Blank at 60 minutes into the boil for about 13.2 IBUs. But this sour beer needs some fruit. And going for the underdark dwarven ale type feel, I wanted to go for something that looks a bit dark, a bit bloody, a little bit evil. So let's go in with cherries. I think a cherry sour sounds really good. Now we want really strong flavour and tartness, so I'm going to go with about 200 grams per litre of cherry. So I'll be adding four kilograms of cherry puree once fermentation is finished. There's many ways to sour a beer. You could use lactobacillus bacteria in the kettle and allow it to sour that way, allow the bacteria to create more of that lactic acid and then boil it away once you've reached your desired pH. But that's a lot of effort. So instead what I'm gonna do is use Laubru's Philly Sour Yeast. This is a typical ale yeast that produces lactic acid as a byproduct of fermentation. This means there's no bacteria involved which means no contamination. Now it's considered good, better practice if you want more sour flavor to use two packets, so I'm gonna use two packets in my batch. This is also the reason why I'm adding some dextrose in, because it allows for some easy chain sugars that the yeast can use to produce more lactic acid, as I want it to be really mouth puckering. I'm really excited for this, so let's get on with the brew day. I've heated up my strike water to around 71 degrees, and this is going to be a 5 gallon batch, so I've got 25 litres of mash water prepared. I'm then going to go in with my grain bill of 3.2 kilograms Pilsner malt, 1.2 kilograms of wheat malt, 1 kilogram of malted oats, 500 grams of carapils, and 300 grams of acidulated malt. I'm going to stir this in and make sure that there's no dough balls, and we're going to be mashing at about 65 degrees for one hour. Once it's all stirred in, I'm going to give it around 5 minutes before turning on the pump to recirculate the wort. Once the mash is done, I'm going to lift the grain basket onto these legs here and allow this wort to drain. I'm then going to be sparging with about 5-6 to six litres of sparge water and making sure to really squeeze the grain against the side of the grain basket to get rid of all the wort from the grain. At the same time, I'm also going to start heating the wort up to a boil. Once we finish the sparging, I'm going to dispose of the grain and add my dextrose and maltodextrin and stir this in as well. Then I'm going to wait for the boil. Once 
Once we're boiling, we're gonna go in with our bittering hops of 10 grams of Halatau Blank at 60 minutes left of the boil. Then at 15 minutes, we're gonna add my yeast nutrient and put in my immersion chiller to sanitize it in the boiling wort. Once the boiler's done, it's gonna be time to cool down to our fermentation temperature of about 20 degrees and then pitch into our fermenter. Once it's all been transferred to the fermenter, we're gonna pitch our yeast of two packets of Philly Sour yeast. Now I found Philly Sour has a 24 to 48 hour lag time before fermentation starts, where it first produces the lactic acid. So if it hasn't started straight away, it's all good. Once the beer's finished fermenting, I'm gonna open up my Firmzilla and start adding my four kilograms of cherry puree. I use branded cocktail puree for this as it's around 90% actual fruit puree and it's already pasteurized to prevent contamination. And the color is gorgeous. I'm going to leave this for around a week to soak up all the flavour, after which I'm going to transfer this to my keg. Once it's transferred, it's time to keg, wait for it to carbonate and be ready to serve. Under dark, so like evil elves and that kind of what's shit. So I made it look like blood almost kind of thing. Oh, I see. So what's this one gonna look? Beetroot, mushrooms. And here we've got this week's slow spout or the cherry sour. This is a evil elf kind of drink made, you know, drunk in the underground, which I'm kind of looking forward to. First of all, does this look like a evil drink? Ah, yeah, it looks evil to me. <laughs> Like, you know, you got a bit of like blood element kind of thing to it, you know, a bit of like a vampire's drink. I'm kind of digging it, I'm digging it. Beautiful colour. I wish it was transparent. It looks like it's going transparent at the bottom there, can you see that? It's sort of like lake water. Yeah, lake water. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, like muddy, but you can kind of still see through. I know what it looks like because I've panicked in a lake before and that's <laughs> what you see. Do you want to get a smell? There's a lot of cherries in this. Yeah, it just smells like cherries. It smells so good. This reminds me of as well as when we used to get birthday cakes. I don't know if you had it with the cherry on the top. Like, we used to get them a lot when I was younger and I'd always eat the cherries because my sister didn't like them. I'm not getting anything else other than cherries though. Cherries. Didn't Ch work. No, we do. I'm writing that in there. Cherries. <laughs> you absolute. Oh my god, that's so good. I'm so happy with this. That came out mm. just the way oh that god. I wanted it. That's really, that's dangerously good. So many cherries, Dangerous. like huge cherry punch. That, was, that came out like uh, mouth was saying Potter. Potter, Potter, Potter. Huge cherry punch. But then, because I added some maltodextrin in there, which is basically not for non-fermentable sugars, it remains that you get a little, it doesn't taste watery. Well, that's what it is. You've got a little bit of like a mouthfeel in there. It's quite nice. I'm it's really hard to explain. It's like if you have, what are those things you used to have at school? Sugar dusters? Yes. Like when you have those really long, sugar duster tubes and you put them and you get that flavor well it's just sugar but there's a good way of explaining it there's like a little bit of um body left over and a little bit of uh, sweetness that isn't completely fermented away and it's a great replacement in my opinion for lactose so if you're trying to make vegan friendly beers and you don't want to use lactose maltodextrin great way to add some extra body it's sour as well though isn't it i'm not it? just saying it's toot your own horn it's one of the nicest beers i've had <laughs> like, you know I'd tell you if I didn't like it, it's good. It's got a really nice like twang. Twang, tang. Like it's got the cherry, but it's it's generally got like a, it's acidic. 
because mm. you can feel your tongue yeah. and your mouth start to salivate. I absolutely love that sort of flavours though. I don't know if anyone's the same as me, probably, but it's like my favourite sort of flavours are like Tabasco, vinegar, like mm. really like punchy flavours. Mm. I'm not saying this tastes like Tabasco, it tastes like cherries, but it's got that acidity it does. to it, which I think is really nice. Like, I wasn't going to finish this, but I am now. <laughs> Otherwise, no, I'm really happy with this. Uh, and the Philly Sour yeast came out really well. Has anybody else had good luck with fermenting with Philly Sour? Let me know what you've made and how it's come out. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And bye. <laughs> Cherries. Didn't sure. work. No, we do. I'm writing that in there. <laughs> no, it's not going in. It's not going in. It's not going in. See, this isn't real life. We can delete this sort of thing.